Hello and welcome to this Feed Info Perspectives video on the relationship between microbiota and immunity. I am Ollie Theokaras, Head of Perspectives Content. So today I'm going to be speaking to three experts from Phileo Le Safre who are supporting this video. We're going to talk about everything related to this subject, from the link between an animal's microbiome and its immunity to in vitro modelling and how advances in this area are improving our knowledge. Uh, and finally, we'll talk about the future. We will get an understanding of where the research will go next and what more we can learn in this area. So to our three speakers today, thank you for being here. We have Pauline peltier pin who is the R&D director at Phileo Le Safre. We have Julie Schulfus, who is an immunity R&D manager. And we have Ramona Cernat, who is an in vitro platform manager. Thank you all for being here today. Now, I'm going to come to you first, Pauline. Would you be able to give us an overview, uh, an introduction of yourself and your team? And also uh, tell us where you are at the moment. Hello and welcome to our research and innovation lab located in Lille, north of France. Uh, I am Pauline Pelletiepin and I am a R&D director of Phileo. Uh, I am with two colleagues today, um, Ramona Cernat, she is uh, leading the in vitro platform, and uh, Julie Schulte, she is an uh, immunity R&D manager. Thank you for that overview, Pauline. That was great. Um, so now uh, I'd really like to get your thoughts, being the R&D director of a significant player in our industry, on the field of R&D. We want to understand about exciting research that's happening in animal nutrition and health at the moment. Can you give us some insight here, please? Yeah, sure. In the, in the past, research focused mainly on improving uh, annual productivities or feed conversion ratios with the use of antibiotic uh, growth promoter or use of amino acids or enzymes. But today, even if the challenge uh, remains to produce healthy animals um, with less, I think the interesting point is that we are taking into consideration a, a more global vision, uh, taking into account environmental impact with um, focus on antibiotic reduction, or um, animal welfare uh, to promote healthy animals. Um, on the technological standpoint, I think animal science benefited a lot of, of the huge progress in omics technologies from genome sequencing, transcriptomic, metabolomics, but most importantly on understanding microbiota modulation. From my point of view, one of the most exciting uh, research, but also complex nowadays, is linked to the so-called gut-brain axis where we have been able to emphasize the critical importance of gut microbiota and most importantly the link with behavior um, and immune activation and also uh, digestive permeability. So I want to know now about Phileo Le Safre. What research are you doing in this area? So our solutions are mainly given, given through the field. So it means that our product or our solution will um, arrive in the, in the intestine and the intestine is where everything starts like health, nutrition and also disease. So by understanding what is going on in the intestine will help us to tackle the next challenges. Let's not forget that in the intestine it's where the um, gut microbiota meets or the host cells. So there will be all this complex relationship between these um, um, the common cell bacteria on one side and all these epithelial and immune cells on the other side. So understanding how the two of them interact with each other, we will promote health. Can you give us some insight into the uh, link between immunity and livestock gut health? Common cell microbiota and their metabolites play an important role in the modulation of homeostasis and the functioning of the innate and adaptative immunity by both direct and indirect mechanisms. Commensal microorganisms, microorganisms as well as pathogens are being screened and discriminated while in the luminal uh, intestinal lumen while uh, their metabolites are diffusing from the lumen to the intestinal uh, epithelium. These effects 
are triggering via microbial and metabolite specific uh, receptor interaction uh, certain uh, transduct, um, signaling trans, uh, transduction pathways we, and uh, uh, transcriptional uh, mechanism which have as result uh, differentiation, maturation uh, and effector function activation of many immune cells and thus are modulating the pro and anti-inflammatory responses. These sensing, sensing receptors are present in different combinations in uh, different uh, cell subsets like intestinal epithelial cells, dendritic cells, macrophages, um, uh, lymphoid cells, and thus play a, an important role in host microbiota interaction uh, in the host. Now, Pauline, you've actually told me that you have an ecosystem of platforms to aid research in this area. So it'd be very good to understand a bit more about this and why it's beneficial to advancing research. First, as we mentioned earlier, we are not just looking at uh, animal performance, but we go beyond that trying to answer questions related to mode of actions and interaction of our solutions. So we were looking for tools and uh, external uh, capabilities or labs and uh, this was missing to answer our needs. Secondly, we are a science-based company, so we decided to invest internally in our dedicated assets, for example with cutting-edge uh, research labs, but also uh, to attract really talented experts in many uh, different areas. At Philo by Le Saf, we want to develop science-based products and solutions. And to do so, we are taking the project from an idea to a product launch. To do that, it can simply start with uh, strain selection and screening with fermentation capabilities. Um, we also have a formulation analytical platform that allow us to characterize our product, but also to understand their the way they function in feed processing technologies uh, in order to address customer needs. Going back to mode of action or strength screen, uh, we have developed several years ago in vitro model allowing us to assess performance of, of product. And we took a, leg, a leap forward recently by um, implementing and creating a dedicated in vitro platform. Thank you for that overview, Pauline. So uh, what I really want to understand is a bit more about in vitro modelling. Uh, I think one of the reasons that we've managed to progress so uh, much in this field has been because we've been able to learn more through in vitro modelling. Now this is your area of expertise Ramona, so can you give us some information about how this sort of work has developed? The reason for going into this uh, research area is our firm belief that in vitro models can bring our R&D to the next level and help us document uh, in vitro efficacy of our products while respecting the animal welfare. The in vitro models are not new for Phileo. Back in the days, Phileo was the first company to acquire and use dual flow technology for investigating the, the effect of Phileo's products on fiber digestibility, colonic microbiota modulation and SCFA production in ruminants. Last year, we committed to implementing two new, new technologies, Team One and Shine. Team One system is the uh, best in vitro digestibility model. It is a dynamic in vitro upper gut simulator, which has of 80% reproducibility in vitro as compared to in vivo situations. The Team One system is fully computer controlled and is using in vivo data to design digestion protocols. Team One system represents a unique tool which allows for investigation into nutritional quality of food and feed, including different types of diet, survivability of our probiotics in the upper gut, the dissolution 
absorption, bioconversion of different nutrients like proteins, carbohydrates, lipids, mineral, vitamins, as well as challenge models and the possibility to look into the active transport of biomolecules when combining the TIM-1 system with 2D or 3D cell line models. SHIME and SPINE systems. SHIME stands for uh, simulator of the human intestinal microbial ecosystem, while SPINE stands for simulator of pig intestinal uh, microbial ecosystem. These two uh, systems are um, other uh, in vitro validated uh, uh, gut models, which mimic in vitro the full gastrointestinal tract from stomach until the distal colon. These systems accurately reproduce colonic microbiota since they are uh, being inoculated with fecal sam samples taken either from human volunteers or from animal uh, uh, feces. These systems as well allow for complementary analysis into host microbiota interaction in this case, a mucosal SHIME system can be used. In terms of application, a SHIME system allows for survivability of probiotics in a full gastrointestinal tract, microbiota modulation and metabolic activity, possibility to combine uh, and study luminal and mucosal microbiota with the use of L and and M shime and probiotic modulation of the gut microbiota. Ancon gas production technology is also being used in the in vitro platform for screening different microbial strains for their ability to degradate fibers in vitro. This allows us to further select the best leading candidates, which will be then investigating, investigated for their health and nutritional benefits using in vivo animal trials. So now I want to come to you, Julie. Uh, let's talk about products available. Um, can you give us some insight into the sort of things that are available now that will actually boost immunity through improving gut health? The immunology is a quite a vast uh, field, right? There's a lot of things. So here at Phileo, we're focusing more on innate immunity and also how epithelial cells will react towards um, our solutions. So to work on that, we have developed two solutions or two strategic axes. Um, one of them is on more immunomodulation and we have been able through very hot topic in scientific literature, such as uh, train immunity, to be able to develop some um, ex vivo model of macrophages uh, from um, monocytes and assessing whether our solutions, such, such as safglucan, for instance, were able to induce a very strong and powerful train immunity. And it's very interesting because train immunity um, help the innate cells, such as macrophages, which is one of the most um, present population in the intestine, to be ready to fight a pathogen when on counter. So it's a, it's a very interesting, interesting tool when we're thinking um, about prevention. The cells uh, which have been trained with uh, savlucan will uh, show some reduction of, uh, of pathogen when infected or even promote some vac vaccination. And the second axis of, um, of our research, immunology research, will be more towards um, gut integrity. So as I mentioned earlier, um, the epithelial cells the, the ep are, are very important. It's the first line of defense uh, in the intestine. So when bacteria are coming or pathogen, inviting pathogen are around, they might breach through this barrier. So being able to keep this barrier very um, closely attached together, it's key. Um, so we are also working on solutions to do, to do such, uh, to, as, to uh, achieve such goal. So to do this, we are going to work mainly with uh, 2D models. So having in the lab some um, uh, epithelial cells from either human, uh, uh, like uh, T84 cells, or even a jejunal cell line from swine, like IPEG-G2. And we are going to focus whether 
our solution towards the stress or uh, an infection can help to reduce the permeability of this epithelium and also help this epithelium to be able to defend himself better by producing more maybe antimicrobial peptide, uh, mucus and uh, everything which is known uh, uh, around um, gut health. And then we can also do this type of co-culture when we will have some epithelial cells on the top and some immune cells at the bottom and see how the relationship is established, what type of uh, cytokine or genes are expressed uh, using various techniques of uh, QPCR, ELISA and so on. So a research area like uh, on immunomodulatory of proper immune cells which are located in the gut and on epithelial cells help us to go through prevention and really help to uh, reduce anti um, antibiotic usage in the animals. Thank you for that overview. Now, uh, Pauline, I want us to look to the future now. Can you give us a bit of an overview as to the next steps for research in this field? The agricultural sector worldwide faces numerous challenges that will require innovation, new technologies and probably a new way uh, to approach agriculture. I am convinced that scientists will have to set a, a new roadmap in order to address the challenges of sustainable animal production. On the technical standpoint, uh, we will have to develop newest technologies. And I think as a scientist, it's a great opportunity for us uh, to be part of this movement and try to develop all the tools and technology that will be required to better protect and nourish the planet. It sounds like we have an exciting future to come. Thank you very much today to uh, Pauline, to Julie and to Ramona for giving their insight into this very timely subject. Thank you to you all for tuning in and watching this video and we hope you join us for future videos from FeedInfo.